Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter from us at St. Giles to you who are also at St. Giles. This is a beautiful, beautiful day of celebration. We have walked through Holy Week and are now here to celebrate our risen Lord. Let us join together. Well, first, I'm not going to give you announcements because we have just so much worship to do. And my bulletin is tucked away now. If you haven't got a bulletin, please grab one on your way out. There is so much happening, so much coming in the life and activity of our community. It is a joyful season, a wondrous day. Let us begin our worship with a call to worship, which comes from Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, rejoice and be glad in. Let us rejoice as we begin with our opening hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
Let us come before our God in prayer. Almighty and all-powerful God, we come before you a resurrection people, filled with joy for we know that Jesus is alive. He is risen. We know that death has been defeated. There is rejoicing in our hearts, and we ask that you receive our offering of worship this day, that you make yourself known to us in these moments. Help us to feel your presence. Draw us together in this fellowship and grant us the courage that we need to act as Jesus acted, to live as he lived, to trust in the resurrection and live in the truth of it. Help us as we celebrate the promise of Easter and help us receive this gift a little better, to let ourselves be transformed by it, to become living witnesses of hope in a world that so desperately needs it. We need your help with this, Lord. We need your help in truth because our desires and our comforts, our needs, they pull us away from what you want for us. We close our eyes to the things that make us uncomfortable. We harden our hearts when we don't want to get involved. We ask for you to transform us and bring us into new life. We ask for resurrection of our faith. Help us as we seek to live as Easter people. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On that first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene proclaimed, I have seen the Lord, and what joy this would have been to proclaim this message. She has seen the Lord. He is risen. The stone was rolled away, and the tomb found empty. Thanks to Christ's gift, we have been given new life. We are forgiven and free. Walk confidently into this life, sharing the hope you have received with others. At this time, I believe we have a presentation from our youngest choir. At this time, if any of the children would like to go down to Sunday school or the nursery, they're welcome to, but they're also able to stay with us and worship here.
The shroud that was cast all over the people has been destroyed. Our separation from our God is gone forever, and death has been swallowed up forevermore. The Lord of hosts will wipe away every tear from our faces, and our disgrace is taken away. Our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. We are forgiven, for the Lord has spoken, and Jesus has conquered the grave. It will be said on that day, this is our God. We have waited for him. He has saved us. This is our God. His steadfast love endures forever. He has saved us. This is our God. We have accepted his sacrifice, and he has saved us. This is our God. We wait no more. He has made a way. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The kingdom of God is here. Let us be glad and rejoice. This is our God. And this is his salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Spirit of resurrecting truth, roll away any assumptions that block our understanding of the Easter story. Open our minds and hearts to receive the good news that Christ is risen indeed. Change our lives with this gift. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of John. <clears throat> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb <clears throat> and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They did still not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him and cried out, Teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the good news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us join together in our next hymn, Come People of the Risen King.
Let us pray. May the words of my lips and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, yesterday, the parking lot at Sunripe was absolutely full. It was so full. I haven't seen it that full in a while, and I thought, oh, two for one day? No. <laughs> it was Easter. And people were leaving with treat towers and spiral hams. There were baskets loaded with goodies. It was a great, exciting day for many people. And the same can be said for every grocery store in town, right? You're seeing people leave with baskets and bows and buttons on bunnies. And it was just colorful everywhere. There were shiny eggs, you know, the kind I'm talking about, the cream eggs. Those are dangerous. They look beautiful. They taste delicious. They're dangerous. You've got the mini eggs, and you've got the classic edible food substance known as the peep. How many of you like peeps? Okay, because I want to know who buys them. Oh, okay. So, but... Like, they're an amazing testament to longevity. You know, like, they have been around forever, the peeps. We may not know why everyone finds every treat irresistible, but in the lead-up to Easter that has been splashed all over this world since February 15th, we see that the world proclaims Easter as shiny, as colorful, as picture-perfect, right? It is light and color and spring. But that's not the Easter that is proclaimed in the gospel. The Easter that we know at the heart of our faith does not begin with buttons and bows and beautiful bunnies. It actually starts in the dark. It begins not with a feast and spiral ham, but instead with a woman going to a tomb. And Mary, with her outer garment wrapped tightly around her body, is likely battling cold, trying to retain as much heat as her body can, for there is no sun warming the earth yet. She probably appeared smaller than she actually was as she huddles in, both with grief and discomfort and sorrow. And she moves towards that tomb, slowly, deliberately. But what happens when this broken-hearted woman gets there? It's not instant joy, is it? Instead, what we find is instant panic. She runs. She runs to find Peter and John, and together they go, hearts pounding to the open tomb. Cloth is strewn, the stale air lingers, and then the weeping. That is Easter. The bloodshot eyes, the blinding white light, the questions, the tears, that is Easter. The heavy hearts not ready to see before Jesus appears and then tugged into the awesome realization of what has happened. That is Easter. Easter is emotion and hope. Easter is a message to proclaim. Easter is, I have seen the Lord. I have seen him. It wasn't perfect. She didn't have her best dress on. There was no Easter bonnet. Instead, what we see is a a woman, brokenhearted, yet now filled with joy, running to share the news, finding her hope again, finding her joy. What we find is Easter is life, bringing this brokenness, together. It's life bursting into darkness. It's raw. It's real. It's incredibly beautiful. For he has come bringing hope. Death could not hold him. Possibilities abound. Hope has come in the form of new life. That is Easter. And it's a good thing we don't settle for what we expect isn't it? 
because Mary expected to find a body, but what she found instead was something so much greater. It's a good thing we don't have to settle for what we expect because God desired something different. God desired to make things new, and God went to work in the form of Jesus, raising him to life to proclaim good news for all those who would see. This broken and bruised woman comes to the tomb, carrying burdens and pain, and leaves with a message of hope. We are loved and sought out. We were lost and now are found. This isn't something that you keep to yourself, right? At least according to Jesus, who helps launch Mary's preaching career. She's she's a woman who is there, who has this great news, and what does Jesus say? He says, go and tell. Go and share this news. Go and tell them what is to come. And so she does. She goes with tear-stained cheeks, with joy in her heart, and a completely overstimulated nervous system. Her body would have been resonating with joy and trying to figure out exactly what had happened, right? She is absolutely beyond herself, probably looking slightly crazed. And she gives the best sermon ever delivered for her willingness to testify to this moment, her shared witness with the disciples. It changes this world and our lives for the better. We are sitting here today because she said... I have seen the Lord. Those people who were there were in absolute despair. They were distressed beyond belief. Their grief hung so heavy. And Mary's words, Mary's hope proclaimed may not have changed all of their minds immediately, but it sparked Something within. And those who had lost everything found there was possibility again. Found that hope was not dead. In fact, it was alive. And in this spontaneous, honest proclamation from the one who had seen the Lord, hope starts to spread. The scene is so different from the scene that's been sold to us. It isn't picture perfect. It's not absolute beauty. What it is is messy. It's real. It's human. There were beating hearts, bent over disciples. There was doubt and joy caught in tension. And the people there who had run and run back, you know Mary showed up just over the moon, bent over, trying to catch her breath. For the whole scene, it was never something they expected. The hope of the world was alive, and a woman was the one to share this good news. This keeps with our theme of things being incredibly messy. For women in that culture weren't really credible witnesses. They were more property. But God never cared about culture. God was always working upside down in different ways. And God, as God does, used a woman to proclaim this message first. God's always flipping our expectations from what they are to what he sees should be. God's always reminding us that it isn't our plans that save, it is his. It's not our thoughts that are right and our design, but rather God's desire and God's constant work that makes things right in the end. And so, on that first Easter, we see God at work through this woman We see God at work proclaiming this message. 
Just as another Mary once proclaimed Jesus' impending arrival as a child, this Mary gets to do the same. And together, the cry of these women's voices serves as a great reminder to us that nobody writes stories like this in this time. Not in this way. So something happened that day, and that something was Jesus. God breaks all conventions and works his way into our lives. God breaks our rules and our expectations to bring about his presence and his purpose. And if you think about it, if you're going to write a story that's credible, you do it with Peter, right? Not Mary. But God never worried what people think about him. He just wants to know his people. So she was the one who was at the tomb, and she was the one who was there weeping. She was the one who was present and faithful, and she was the one who would proclaim the good news first. It's not picture perfect, but it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be real. Easter has always been about making things right for God's people with God. And that's what Jesus did. Mary was urged to go and tell, and so she did. And that's why we are all gathered here with hope in our hearts. We are here because Mary went and shared the hope she had in a world that desperately needed it. We, too, can share the hope we have. For this world, it needs hope. And we are here knowing that hope is alive and is something upon which we can depend. God loved this world so much that he sent his son to save it. Those who believe in him, they have a hope and a future. And that, that is good news. And that is Easter. Amen. Now we have come here today a joyful people. As we present our gifts of time and talent, our possessions or our presence, we are offering what we have to God. Let us reflect on God's goodness and generosity and what a blessing the gift of Easter is to us.
Let us pray. God of resurrection, of new life and new beginnings, we offer these gifts with grateful hearts in hopes that you will receive them and transform them, that those who need hope and joy might experience your presence and come to know you better. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Easter, and we have gathered to embrace this feast day, this festival day. We savor the delights we find at the table of our Lord, and we have come together in response to his invitation to be part of his family. This is not my table. It's not your table. It's not the table of St. Giles Presbyterian or even the table of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. This is an open table to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who love him, and who want to know him better. You are welcome at this table. Come as you are. Come and feast and receive the good gifts of our Lord Jesus Christ and know that all you need to do is come with an open heart. Come and receive the gift of welcome from our God. Now, as we pray together, for those who are not um, comfortable or familiar with this in the way that St. Giles does things, I'll walk you through it before we begin. The responses will be on the screen for those who um, do not have a bulletin, and you can follow along that way. When we get to the distribution, we will talk you through that as well. But again, just please follow along as you feel comfortable. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give your to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our and it is our great joy and our honor to offer you our thanks and praise, Almighty God, for you are maker and ruler of our universe. It was you who spoke light into darkness, who breathed life into existence. And from your hand, humanity was formed in your image. Throughout time, you chose to invest in your people, and you call us into a way of life, of service alongside you. And while you, God, were always faithful, we acknowledge the same cannot be said of us. There are many times that we have turned away from your voice. We ignored your call, and we went back to our own ways. Still, This never prevented you from reaching out, from calling us back to you. Over and over again, you have delivered us from captivities of our own making, and you've shown us that you want more for us, offering us partnership and a willingness to form covenants with you. When we really get lost, Lord, you send prophets to remind us of your way. The greatest reminder that you gave to us was found in your son Jesus, the resurrected Christ. On earth, he was mortal, fragile, just like us. He showed us the way in which to live and opened up the faith to us so we could truly understand it. Jesus embraced his life. He embraced friendship, rejoicing with those who celebrated, such as at the wedding in Cana, and he wept as he lost friends like Lazarus. He knew what it was to be truly human, and we are grateful for this gift. We come before you today offering our praise and our thanksgiving for all that he has done, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord full of resurrection power and might, and holy is your son Jesus, the risen one. He didn't have much in terms of earthly treasures, yet he had everything, for he was rich with grace and mercy. He wasn't universally beloved as he tended to challenge people and he often sought change. Yet even though he experienced rejection, he continued to extend welcome to those who sought him. Through his sacrifice on the cross, we have been given new life. His rising from the grave shows us life eternal is promised. And when he was raised into your glory, a great gift was sent to us. 
The Holy Spirit descended upon us to keep us united with him and with each other. We give you thanks that on the night before our Lord Jesus died, he took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering these gracious acts in our Lord Jesus Christ, we take from creation these gifts, and we joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice, dedicated to your service, for great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless might be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in this world. Empower us through your Holy Spirit, God, to be Christ's presence in this world, even as Jesus was God with us. Give us his courage. Help us to speak his truth. Help us, Lord, to seek justice and to love as Jesus loved. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of the eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and always. Amen. Let us join together now in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we break the bread, it is a sharing in the body of Christ. And when we bless the cup, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ. These are gifts from God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as we distribute these beautiful gifts, I'm going to serve the elders who will serve you. So there will be two stations here at the front that you are welcome to come to and receive the gifts from the table. If you are someone who needs us to come to you, please know that that is perfectly fine. We are going to go around the sanctuary and, and meet anyone who needs us to meet them. So we will all have our opportunity to gather at the table. But these are our gifts and what a joy it is to receive these gifts from the Lord. We have bread for you. So please let us know, and we will make sure that you get what you need. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. This is the cup of our salvation. This is the cup of our salvation. This is the cup of our salvation. This is the cup of our salvation.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, God, for this holy mystery and for the opportunity that we've had to gather in this meal together. Help us, Lord, as we move from this moment into the world to live as Easter people, celebrating the love of Christ and the joy that we receive at his table. We ask you, God, to send us forward in the strength of your Holy Spirit to help us give of ourselves for others as we seek to make this world, well, more in line with what you envision it to be, as we seek to build your kingdom, your way, as we go. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, hope is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So go and tell the world that hope is here. Hope is not dead. Hope is living among us. And hope is for all. Now to help with this, because I know sometimes it's hard to share hope, we have a little package for you as you leave. Now if one of my assistants could bring one of each package to me. I will demonstrate with your help. So I have quite a few assistants back there. Ooh, I have two. Thank you. This is awesome. OK. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to share hope, and you don't know exactly what to say. Well, we know that the stone was rolled away, right? So as you leave, you will get a package of Rolos. <laughs> if you find someone discouraged this week, tell them, have no fear. Hope is alive. The stone was rolled away. <laughs> if you know you're going to encounter someone who is allergic to, now I cannot confirm, these say they have no peanuts in them, but I am so vigilant that I will not feed them to anyone who has a peanut allergy. So. If you think you will encounter someone with a peanut allergy, please take the Skittles. The Skittles have a lovely poem about the meaning of Easter and the colors of Easter. These are for you to share hope with the world. Please only take the Skittles if you know you need them because there are fewer of those. But may God bless you this Easter as you celebrate the hope that is found in our risen Lord. As we close today, go knowing that you are loved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you always, giving you fellowship, community, and peace. And rest in the presence and strength of our Lord Jesus, who is risen, who is alive. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts or our voices, or both, as we sing our closing hymn, Lift High the Name. <laughs> 